to uh, get into what I've been wanting to do with the end of each video, um, you know, pretty much highlighting something from scripture that, that really hits at home. I kind of want to get into it with, with Romans. I, I love where I'm at in Romans right now because it really highlights the depravity uh, that man is in before God's gift of grace. So I'm kind of just going to get into it. We're going to be in Romans 3, 10 through 18 to start. And that is, there is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they keep deceiving. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their paths. And the path of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Uh, before I get to the next part, I, I just want to highlight what that what that means. And before God saved me by His grace, I didn't realize how wicked that I actually was. I had this belief in God, but I never had the living faith. I, I had a dead faith. And what happened was I reached my lowest point that I ever reached in my entire life. And I realized if God wouldn't have done that, I would have not had the realization that the greatest blessings that I ever had in my life, I used to think were my daughter. But what it actually was is the greatest blessings were everything in my life that led me to that lowest point because that was the check on the status quo of my faith. We can have the belief, but if we don't have a living faith, a, a true faith, what is called the faith, then we can't get in. And I don't want to hear those words, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness, I never knew you. I, I don't want to hear that, and I don't want anyone around me to hear that. So when that happened, that realization happened to me, that changed my entire life. That, that God saved me with that grace because I am so undeserving of it. For 27 years of my life, I lived for me, even though my belief was there. As soon as I had that realization, everything changed. Everything that I think about, I speak about, and I act now, I'm not perfect, but it has God in mind. There is a higher accountability above my likes and my desires to everything that I do. Um, and that's going to lead into... The next part of Romans that I want to end with, because that sounds like bad news right there, what I just read. That is the state of you, me, everyone that is here on this planet, everyone before and in future. Without his grace, none seek for God. This is what is natural for us since the fall of man. Now, what we say in 21 through 31, this is what I want to end with. It says, but now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God he passed over the sins previously committed. For the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at the present time so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? This is important. It is excluded. By what kind of law? Of works? No, but by a law of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Or is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also. Since indeed God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith is one. Do we then nullify the law through faith? May it never be. On the contrary, we establish the law. So what's important here, what I want to end with, the only thing that can save you is nothing of yourself. There is nothing that you can do pleasing in the eyes of God, which comes later in Scripture. Um, but there is nothing that you can do in the eyes of God that pleases Him, because in your natural state, in our natural state, we are totally deprived. But we are redeemed through the sacrifice that Christ Jesus made. We are redeemed through His sacrifice for our sins that we deserve, for our natural actions. We have a will, but our will is is, is a creaturely will that is, is in iniquity, right? So what's important in that last part, that grace, that beautiful faith, that is all we need. And there's nothing that we do that can boast about it. That is a gift, as it is called. It is the gift of grace 
that our faith is established, and that is how we are saved, and that is the most beautiful thing. Sometimes the gospel is so simple that it insults the minds of men, and that we want to, well, what can I do, right, as James White likes to put it? But what I've found so beautiful about his grace, it is, is freely given to undeserving people, and it can change your life, but not, not to change your life so you have a better life. It's to change your life so you can glorify him. That is the whole point. There is no other point. And, and I just thought that that was a, a huge point and, and a huge representation for my life, which is how wicked I was and then how I'm washed clean of that. It's not of myself. It's by him, and the glory goes to him on that. And I want to end with this part, actually. At the end when Paul says, so then, uh, let's see, specifically where he asked, do we abolish the law because we're saved by faith? And he says, may it never be. On the contrary, we establish the law. Essentially what that's saying is, well, if we're saved by faith, does that mean we can live however we want? No, because if you're saved by His grace through faith, then that's going to change your heart, and you're going to want to follow Him. You're not going to want to follow the creaturely will. And at that point, I would say read, on, read further on in Romans, and you'll see that. Um, guys, this isn't just a book. This is Theonoustos, which is God-breathed. And if you read it, if you really, if you really pray about it, you're going you're gonna to see some massive changes in your heart. And, and, I, and I pray that you do.